Welcome back to the Phantom Toll Booth. We just discovered that Milo's quest, his adventure, should have been impossible. That's what he just was told by King Azaz. And now, we'll pick it up where Milo was not uttering a sound. Finally, when they'd reached a broad, flat place, <clears throat> playing midway between Dich Dictionopolis and Digitopolis, somewhat to the right of the Valley of Sound and a little to the left of the Forest of Sight. The long line of carriages and horsemen stopped and the great carnival began. Gaily striped tents and pavilions sprang up everywhere as the workmen scurried like ants. Within minutes, <clears throat> they, there were rec uh, race courses and grandstands Sideshows and refreshment booths, gaming fields, Ferris wheels, banners, bunting, and bedlam, almost without pause. The math magician provided a continuous display of brilliant fireworks made <clears throat> up of exploding numbers, which multiplied and divided with breathtaking results. The colors, of course, were being supplied by Chroma, and the noise by the deliriously happy Dr. Discord, <clears throat> Thanks to the soundkeeper, there was music and laughter, and for uh, for very brief moments, even a little silence. Alec Bing set up an enormous telescope and invited everyone to see, to see the other side of the moon. And the humbug wandered through the crowd, accepting congratulations and recounting the great detail in great detail his brave exploits, most of which gained Im immeasurably in the retelling. <laughs> and each of evening, just at sunset, a royal banquet was held. There was everything imaginable to eat. King Azaz had ordered a special supply of delicious words in all flavors, and for those who liked exotic foods in all languages, too. The math magician had provided innumerable platters of division dumplings, which Milo was very careful to avoid, for no matter how many you ate when you finished, there was more on your plate than when you began. And of course, following the meal came songs, epic poems and speeches in praise of the princesses and the three gallant adventurers who had rescued them. King Azaz and the math magician pledged that every year at this time, they would lead their armies to the mountains of ignorance until not one demon remained. And everyone agreed that no finer carnival for no finer reason had ever been held in wisdom. But even things as fine as that, as all that, must end sometime. And late one evening on the third day, the tents were struck, the pavilions were folded, and everything was packed, ready to leave. It's time to go now, said Reason, for there is much to do. And as yet, and as she spoke, Milo suddenly remembered his home. He wanted very much to go back, yet somehow he could not bear the thought of leaving. And you, and so you must say goodbye, said Rhyme, patting him gently on the cheek. To everyone, said Milo unhappily. He looked around slowly at all the friends he'd made, and looked very hard so as not to forget any of them for even an instant. But mostly, he looked at Talk and the Humbug, with whom he had shared so much the perils, the dangers, the fears, and best of all, the victory. Never had any two more, never had anyone had two more steadfast companions. Ah, there he is, looking at Rhyme and Reason and his friends. Can't you both come with me? He asked, knowing the answer as he said it. I'm afraid not, old man, replied the bug. I'd like to, but I've arranged a lecture tour which will keep me occupied for years. <clears throat> and they they do need a watchdog here, barked Talk sadly. Milo embraced the bug, who in his most typical fashion was heard to mumble gruffly, bah, <laughs> but whose damp eyes told quite a different story. Then the boy threw his arms around Talk's neck and for just a moment held on very tightly. Thank you for everything you've taught me, said Milo, to everyone as a tear rolled down his cheek. And thank you for what you taught us, said the king, as he clapped his hands. And as he clapped his hands, the little car was brought forward, polished like new. 
Milo got in and with one last look started down the road with everyone waving him on. Goodbye, he shouted. Goodbye, I'll be back. Goodbye, shouted Azaz. Always remember the importance of words. And numbers, added the math magician forcefully. Surely you don't think numbers are more important or as important as words, he heard Azaz <laughs> shout from the distance. Is that so? replied the math magician a little more faintly. Why if Oh dear, thought Milo, I do hope they don't start at all again. And in a moment, they had faded from sight as the road dipped, turned, and headed for home. And we'll leave it there as he says goodbye to his friends, talk, and humbug, and everyone else. And we'll see how the story ends next time.